In this video, we're gonna take a look at dimensions in Adobe Captivate 12. I'm Paul Wilson, and I make videos about e-learning, specifically the authoring tool Adobe Captivate. If you like what I'm doing here today, by all means, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I would certainly welcome it if you shared this video with all of your e-learning colleagues. A potential client reached out to me recently with some questions about dimensions of e-learning projects, and I realized that I hadn't really covered that topic in great detail, so I thought I'd make a short video today on that very thing. Let's get started. Okay, so I have a very simple e-learning project here. It is just uh, one slide, really. And uh, I've already gone ahead and clicked on the project properties icon in the lower right-hand corner here, where we can see, of course, our project dimensions. So to help you understand this, we're gonna look at the two situations, fixed and proportional. And within proportional, we're gonna look at a few options as far as percentage of our viewport. So keep in mind that you can choose one of the default e-learning dimensions here, 1366 by 768 or 1280 by 720 or 1920 by 1080, which is probably full screen for most people or a custom value if you wish here. So I'm gonna put a custom value in of let's say 1200 by 1200, just to keep the math fairly simple here. Now with fixed, what happens when I preview this? Let's take a look at our browser here. My browser is set to be 1200 by 1200. So if I preview this project and we go ahead and play that, it's going to appear full screen because it's 1200 by 1200 and the dimensions of my project is 1200 by 1200. If I go beyond that size, it will always be 1200 by 1200. However, if I shrink below it, that's when responsive design kicks in. And of course, words will wrap to another row, images will get smaller, you know, and your layout will change. And there is a practical limit once we get down to it. I believe it's around um, 768 by 420, somewhere around there, uh, regardless of the numbers that you type in here. Now, the next one, and let's put our, our, our how big is my browser back to, let's say, uh, 1200 by 1200 here. Okay, so 1200 by 1200. Let's go back here and we will change this to proportional. Now, let's first of all consider proportional when this slider is set to 100% here. And by the way, you can just type in that value if you wish as well. So let's preview this now. So 1200 by 1200. 100% proportional. What that means is responsive design will actually work across the entire range of possible resolutions here. So I can go as large as I want, as small as I want, whatever the, the case might be. And that might be a good choice for you here. Let's close these two previews down and we'll just go back to 1200 by 1200. And now what I'll do is I'll change proportional from 100 to 80%, okay? And what that means is that when we preview our e-learning project, if the viewport is 1200 by 1200, again, it will fill the space here and responsive design will work for smaller sizes. But if we go beyond that, it now drops to 80% of the viewport. So if my browser size is, let's say, let's say 1250 by 1250, 80% of that, let's just do the math here. 1250 times 0.8 is 1000. And if we go here, 
and just to a print screen, we can determine, and my guess is that this is going to be bang on a thousand by a thousand there. Plus or minus a pixel here. Yeah, that's exactly what you're going to get. So that could be useful if you want to set a sort of maximum size. And once you go up to that size, if someone's viewing it on a larger browser with a larger monitor, they'll sort of see that maximum size. Some people don't like the 100% view because, of course, it stretches out all your content potentially across very large monitors. So again, those sort of three situations where you're choosing either a fixed amount and it will, responsive will kick in when you go below that, proportional can either be 100% and it will always use the full browser viewport, or you can kind of set that maximum to be you know 80%. Once you go beyond 1200 by 1200, it will only use 80% of the viewport there. So experiment with that and find out what works for your situation. Uh, hopefully this has been a bit of an education in how uh, Adobe Captivate dimensions work. One last thing is make sure that when you're playing with these numbers, don't get confused by the numbers if you have certain settings on your computer. Like for example, in this browser, I'm currently set to 100%, but these screen captures that I've done would be very inaccurate if I was set to 90% or perhaps even to 125% you'll get very different results. Similarly, in Windows, you also have scale and layout. So certainly I could be taking advantage of you know, a different scale and increasing the size of my various objects on my screen to 125%. Again, that's going to change what you see in the display as well. So keep that in mind and uh, you know, use what you've learned in this tutorial to come up with the perfect size e-learning for your organization. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.